Okay, so this is a gold Anna on Oasis. Um, and you really clump up with your team here, right? Uh, this like this is the first thing, and it's you know mo most of this game your team just gets really over pressured, right? Like the enemy team just puts a lot more pressure than you guys are, and you're really not helping um, with with the way that you play sometimes. And you know the biggest part of that is by clumping up with your team so much. So I can imagine like you're starting this position here, which is which is pretty good for you because it means you have you have decent LOS, right? You're quite far back. Uh, like you can see the enemy team. Most importantly, you can see that pharaoh up there. And as soon as you know they have a pharaoh, you want to be you know constantly like checking, right? Like you look up, you check, you see where she is. Um, instead, you come really close, like really really close to the team, close to the front line, which makes it very difficult for you because your LOS is nowhere near as good, and you're also like so close to the front line that you're catching a load of trash damage, right? Like this Moira up here should never really hit you. And if you are going to go for this transition, um, it's like I'd prefer if you probably stayed here, at least at the start of the fight, until you sort of see what's going on. Um, and also, you're playing backline DPS too, right? You're playing a McCree and a Hanzo. So they're going to need quite a lot of healing if they're going to be dueling this Farrah, because if she hits them once, uh, you know, who's going to heal them? So like you, it's good for you to be far back enough that you can actually help them. Um, Instead, you go really far forward with your front line when you can still heal the front line from that position you were at, where you were just before. You don't really have to be... Maybe you came forward, actually, because you're afraid of the Pharah. You don't actually really have to be that afraid of the Pharah where you are here, right? Because there's so much distance that, unless you're really, like, hardscoping her, it's going to be tough to hit, a lot, to hit quite a lot of shots on you. You also have decent cover, the minis to your left as well. Um, and if she does want to come close to you and, you know, try and kill you, she has a lot of ground to cover. Like, not, not to mention, you still have that, you know, McCree and the hands up behind you, so. Um, you don't need to be afraid of the Pharah by playing, uh, if you're, by playing in that position there. Instead, you come really close to the front line, which means you catch a lot of trash damage. And it's, if you want to transition left side, wait till you turn around, uh, you can get away with it if you go into this room here on the left-hand side. Because again, you have a similar place, right? You have a lot of cover with the doorway, and you have a lot of space behind you that you can back up into. Like, if they do try and push you. Instead, you, you're really far up on point, which means, like, uh, like you have to self-nade, you don't have a loss on your backline, you don't have a loss on the Pharah, and then it's like the enemy team are just walking onto you. Um, whereas, like, everything you did here, you could have done from where you're standing before, right? Uh, except you wouldn't have had to use the sleep, you wouldn't have had to use the nade. And if you still had those here, you could have actually countered the enemy's pressure they're putting on your team. And that's, like, the big thing, right? Because because you're getting out-pressured so much, you're never really in a position to like counter that pressure because like you're either hiding or you're sort of too far up and like it's mm, like you're, you're just not really putting yourself in the like in the ideal position to be able to like react to these situations um like on this first map you're playing really close on the second map you're hiding a little bit so like um here right now you're still like a little bit too far up. You, you can really like kite back to that cover. You don't have anything to be afraid of by playing further away from your team. Again, you see this fire shooting you. You have no well out. You have no like LOS on her. You haven't checked where she is. Uh, you haven't like thrown a few shots her way because your team's been full HP for like quite a while now, right? Like you can use that downtime while, while they're full HP to start putting out damage. And that's you know, again, going back to this idea of you really need to focus on putting out pressure. Um, you come forward here for an, I assume for a nade. Um, if we, you know, if we talk again, like, uh, like if we talk again about playing further back, you know, back up the stairs, these options for nades, you know, you still have while you're here, really, right? Like, uh, ideally you can throw one against this corner, maybe, like just above the shield. So I, my epic pen's broken, so I can't really draw anything at the moment. But, um, just above the shield, you can hit the wall, uh, and it will get behind the shield. If they try and push through the shield, you're ready with the nade. You can even probably hit it to the left and get people with the splash. Um, no need for you to go so far forward for this nade. Like, especially when the enemy team is playing this Reaper as well. And you, you saw the Reaper before, right? So you know the enemy team is going to be trying to like push you with that. So you can play like reactively to that instead of you know trying to walk into them. And like, there's not a whole lot you can do here. You made it so difficult for yourself by playing so far forward. You see, like uh, this McCree on the left hand side of the screen losing the jewel to the Pharah. I mean, the Pharah's got a mercy pocket, right? There's no real way this this McCree's going to be able to duel her solo. But if you're playing for the back, you're actually in a position not just to heal him when he's dueling her, but both of you can shoot the Pharah at the same time. So she's not going to be able to get so close to your team and just, um, like, get free shots on them. Yeah, so I don't know. This first fight just playing way too close to your team, right? And it's... 
I, I don't, it's just a sign of if you're playing so close to your team in that situation, you're going to be playing close to your team in a lot of situations where it's going to hurt you. So like, really think about at least starting your fights at that much sort of longer distance. Um, like it, it just puts you in a much better position to react, both in terms of being able to put out pressure against heroes like Farah, but also like with those nades, it's going to be like easier to react to your team because if your team's in your LOS, you know who's you know who's taking damage, right? You know that McCree's taking damage. Like maybe you see someone on your team going for a flank, and you know they're going to need healing, but you can also see the enemy team. So like maybe you see the Farah trying to duel um the McCree. Maybe you see the Reaper about to push through the shield. Uh, and if you're far back enough to actually see those things happening. You can sort of you, you can work out who's going to take damage before they take damage, so you'll actually so you'll actually be like ready to keep them alive. Um, it, that is just that's the main thing you struggle with. So like really focus on playing a little bit further back. Uh, okay, so so here I want to talk about like the the lack of pressure you're like focusing on putting out. Uh, you're running pinned in and fed, but it's it's okay. It's just um it's the way you're focusing so much on your backline here, right? He has this junk rat, and I think there's a widow as well. Um, yeah. A widow just there. And the only thing you're thinking about, if we go back a little bit, the only thing you think about is like healing them, right? You're only looking for heals, looking for heals on the junk rat who's not taking damage. Meanwhile, their fire is just like free firing on you, right? Um, and you, sorry. Um, and you have so much chance to to put pressure up, like mostly on the fire, right? Like you have cover here, you have full ammo, you can pick this fire, you can shoot her. But especially when you see this ball, right? This ball goes in, he goes for a pile driver. You see you see him go for it, right? You see him go that like as soon as you see him, you know, go towards the enemy team like that, like you, you can tell he's gonna go for a pile drive. But you're not looking at him. Like you, you break LOS with him. Uh and I'm not too sure why, because it just means you're not putting out any pressure. Um like right now everyone on everyone on your team is full health, no one's like getting pushed. Um so you have a lot of opportunity. Like no one no one on your team is really gonna take damage here. Uh, I mean, obviously the hammered will in a second, but uh, you don't need to focus on healing, right? You have a lot of chance at the start of this fight, especially just after this Ryan's fed, to really focus on putting out damage, and you're not, and you're not uh, looking for it. Because you can think, like, oh, what's going to happen with this hammond? He's going to go in, he's going to pile driver, and then, you know, he's probably going to boot, like, one or two people above the shield, and then you can get some damage numbers down on that. Instead, uh, instead you're just hiding, right? Very, very backline focus. Just hiding, hiding, hiding. Um, so it's like, you know, sure, like, you're putting out heals, you know, you're keeping this Lucy alive, but it's like, none of this is going to help your team win the fight, because the enemy team's still putting out that pressure on you. Like, it's keeping your team, you know, alive for longer, but it's not actually going to help you win the fight, if that makes sense. Um, you, if, if you let the team just walk onto you and, you know, overwhelm you like this, you're really going to struggle. And, like, you, you get, you'll get nice heal numbers at the end of the game, but, like, you will, you will lose a lot of these situations. Um, so it's, it's just small stuff, right? Like, mostly looking for damage. You have a lot of options to look for damage. You have nothing to hide from here too, right? It's not like they have backline DPS. The only person who can really hurt you at all from, uh, sorry. The only person who can really hurt you at all in this situation is the Farah. And even that, she's not really pressuring you that much. You remember, you do have a Widow behind you too. Um, like right now, you can see the shield's cracked. The shield's just about to go down. Why not try and like thread a nade? Like, through, just as the shield's about to go down, right? Like, this defensive nade, not really that necessary. Actually, was it necessary? No. The Lucy is fine. Now he needs the healing, but you could have also, like, slapped the Zarya, maybe, maybe when she, like, comes up towards you. Like, it's... It's, it's, it's less about the actual micro of what you're doing, but more about the fact you're not looking for these options in the first place, right? And I think there's some more later on. I'm trying to find them. I think it's here I'm thinking about with the with the May. Also, the other thing, your camera management in this game really wasn't ideal. Like, um, you, you're you playing with the Mora quite a lot. I know you had a Lucio too, but um, in general, you have a lot of options, a lot of downtime where your team isn't really taking damage. Uh, and you, you have to, like, use that downtime to look around, right? To, you know, look around a lot, keep an eye on who's going for these flanks, whether it's your team or the enemy team. Instead, you're very, very focused on main, and you're not really aware of things that are happening to the side of you. Like, you, you get flanked by Reapers sometimes. I think this D.Va, like, flew like flew through on left side and is now on point behind you. Um, but even though your team doesn't, you know, really need as much attention, like, your team needs nowhere near as much attention as you're giving them, right? Like this, right? 
Like, sure, you can nade him and pop him back, but you don't need to be peeking main and taking this coalescence damage at least. Um, but, like, you have a lot of options to turn around and sort of keep refreshing, like, your your idea about what's actually going on on the flanks. Um, that's something you really don't do. And, you know, you get flanked by Reapers sometimes. Uh, like, like the Pharaohs, like, when they are playing a Pharaoh, she was doing whatever she wanted. Um, but it's this maze that I was thinking about mostly. Uh, if we can like talk more about the, the the idea of putting out pressure, like how you're not really putting out that much pressure, you think what's gonna like take the most pressure off your team right now? What's gonna take pressure off your team is if you can somehow get this May to go into ice block. If she goes into ice block, she's not gonna be very confident walking onto a Rhine and freezing him because she doesn't have that escape ability. I know, I mean, escape pretty much an escape ability. Like she doesn't have that defensive option. And the easiest way for you to do that is to nate her, right? You can nate her, you can get a couple of shots on her. Even if you don't get those shots on her, she knows that going, going into ice block is going to cleanse the nade, so she's probably going to do it. Uh, and that's going to make it a lot easier for your Ryan to handle frontline. But instead, like, you had an option before, you don't go for it. You have options here too. This maid is just walking all over your Ryan and you're not responding to it, right? Right now? Oh, she just used Ice Block to block the thing. You can easily get a nade here, right? Easily get a nade and kill this me. But you're so focused on healing your Ryan that you're... it's... Because if you throw a nade here, it's going to hit both of them. But it's the fact that you're not thinking... You should always think first about putting out pressure, and healing is sort of secondary. Because the more you put out pressure, the less healing you have to do. Um, and it's, it, it's tough to pick up moments from this VOD because... You, you lost every fight. I mean, you, you won a fight because, uh, like, the enemy screwed their ults up. They pulled their ult six in one fight, and then you got, like, a decent rip tie. But um, you lost every fight, and every single fight you're looking so heavily on this healing. Going for this nade on the Rhine instead of the nade on the May is really confusing to me. Like, you can nade the May, focus the May. If the Rhine needs healing, he's got nano. Like... You can think about Nano as a way to sort of, like, take pressure off you, right? If your team's taking a lot of damage, you can throw Nano out on someone so you can ignore them for the next, you know, five seconds and only focus on putting out damage. It's uh, it's a really good way of using Nano, and, like, you have a lot of options here. Instead, you let them just walk into your team and pressure you back. This, and this fair is walking all over you, by the way. Um, you really want to be confident, or not, not confident, but you need to be comfortable with uh, really just looking up. Like, do you know they have a pharaoh? You can look up. Just see what she's doing, right? You don't have to hit, like, a sick sleep on her or anything. You just have to look up and know what she's doing. Like, th uh, this is again about, like, the camera stuff. See, so, like, hmm. she was shooting you for a long time. She was, sh she was shooting the the widow behind you for a long time. And, like, obviously back to the spacing stuff, like, you weren't aware of any of that, because, yeah, sure, after you sleep this, uh, after you sleep this diva, it feels like you're stuck up here, but you still have time to kite back, right? You still have a lot of time to kite back. Like, right now, if you keep walking back, you'll be fine. Instead, you walk forward again. You're really far forward. And you have, uh, I don't know, <laughs> this nade here, the biggest throw of the game, I think, from you. But, um, yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, this is more of like a first impression thing. I just I skimmed through this VOD once. I just I have a lot to get through. So, um, but the main thing for you is obviously gonna, obviously going to be like first off that spacing stuff. Don't be so grouped up with your team. Play for the back. Gives you much better LOS. Gives you much more options to react. Like especially versus a team that I can sort of understand. You know, maybe they're playing like Genji and Tracer and something, and you're you're scared of being out on the flank by yourself. But versus this comp, they have nothing. Right? They have the Pharah, and that's it. Everyone else is really focused in frontline. So, like, you can really afford to play quite far back from your team. The other thing as well, really focus on putting out pressure. Um, nowhere, near, nowhere near enough pressure from you this game. Uh, whether that's, you know, putting out damage numbers on, like, the fire when she's flying around, when that's looking up to follow up on stuff like, you know, Hammond going for pile drivers, or whether it's, you know, looking to pull nades on May when she's in those, like, you know, really aggressive positions, especially after she's just used Ice Block, right? Like, using Nade to Force Ice Block is good. Uh, using it to secure a kill on her is even better, right? So, like, you really need to be looking for those situations.